There are a million different time management and goal setting techniques, but mine is the best. And all you need is this. Let's be confident here, why not? For the past half year, I've been using these little booklets here to track my goals, track my time as well, on a monthly basis. So one always equals one month. And here's how I do it. But before we go into the more micro monthly perspective, here are my goals for the next four years, which is more of the macro perspective. I want to run a marathon in sub three hours to qualify for the Boston Marathon. I want to reach 100,000 YouTube subscribers and I want to make $5,000 in monthly recurring revenue from my side projects. They are probably already listed in terms of difficulty. I think the sub three hour marathon is the easiest of these goals because I'm the closest to that. 100,000 YouTube subscribers also seems reasonable and doable. Four years is a long time. I'm already at almost half that and I have not been four years on YouTube. And the last one is definitely the most difficult but also the most interesting and the one I want to document the most on this channel. So we know from science that New Year's resolutions actually work. They don't really work in the sense that people stick with them for the whole year but they give you the initial extra motivational boost and so why not break it down? Why not break it down into monthly new resolutions? New monthly Resol resolutions monthly new monthly resolutions which is page one of the little booklet on page one i write down my goals for the whole month i don't want to tell you again what are good goals what are smart goals how to set goals whatever i think you've seen probably a dozen videos on the subject already but i like to differentiate between result based and input based the monthly section of the booklet is the only place I allow myself to set result-based goals. What is that? A result-based goal would be in the next month I want to double my monthly recurring revenue for Bitcoin or Bio. This is a result, this is not an action. The actions would be how do I get there? How do I get to double the monthly recurring revenue? By doing cold outreach, by doing posts on TikTok, by doing whatever, by doing marketing, by doing advertising, I would get there. Meaning in this section, I can zoom out a bit and ask myself, what do I want? I don't want to do call outreach. I want to double monthly recurring revenue. And then in the next section, we will talk about the goals on how to get there. So what are the monthly goals for me? For May, two hours of Spanish every day. This has been my goal for the last six, seven months, maybe. And I've kept with it. I'm always doing two hours of Spanish every day. I also want to run a half marathon in Spain, close to Barcelona at a 425 per kilometer pace, which is my marathon pace. Already signed up for that race and it's more a preparation to see how I feel for 21 kilometers in my marathon pace. It's not really my A race. I don't want to go crazy fast in this one. I also want to finally start the Lenguilla Beta, publish four or more videos on YouTube and as I said, double the monthly recurring revenue of Bitcoin or Bio. Now on the next page are the weekly goals for the first week of that month. And these goals are more like breakdowns of the previous set monthly goals. For example, run 75 kilometers and go to the gym five times to strengthen and stretch more so I can keep staying healthy and progress towards the half and later the full marathon. I want to publish one video. If I do this four times, four weeks, I'm getting to my goal of publishing four videos. I'm working on two different Lengia goals. I want to do cold outreach to Bitcoin influencers, so channels that have a larger audience and want to show them Bitcoin or Bio. And I want to build the backend to a Valorant bot, which is the other project, the guy GG, which I don't really have in my monthly goals right now, but it's part of my weekly goals as well, because this is, this is part of my work. So far, so good. So far, so simple. The next part will be a little more interesting. But first of all, I want to talk about the size the size, the format of these little things. Because there are two advantages to this. First, these are almost exactly one month. There are always only one or two pages left at the end. And second, I have a finite space. This makes me focus on what are the tasks and goals that actually matter for the day, week or month, instead of having a long list of to-dos that don't really have any impact on reaching my goals. I also prefer paper over digital when it comes to to-dos and goals because you don't really just erase stuff as you would do on a computer. You either set the check mark or you need to cross out and that doesn't really look good or you need to leave the square 
empty, which also doesn't look good when you flip through your book. You just want to do the check mark. So it's just, it's like a little bit of gamification. And that's also why the daily goals and tasks work so well. Because in the daily tasks, we don't just do squares, we do multiple squares, we do time boxing. You account for how long a task takes. For me, each square equals 30 minutes. I aim for 16 boxes a day on average, meaning eight hours of productivity. And by productivity, I really mean productivity. These are deep work tasks. It's not just sitting at my computer for eight hours. More than 16 boxes a day is great. Less is also okay at times. On the weekends especially, I'm usually at 10 or 12 boxes. My record is 21 boxes, which is not an insane amount. It's like a bit more than 10 hours. It's 10 and a half hours of work on one day. It's not crazy. So the time I spend on my computer doing real work is probably around six or seven hours, albeit at least six or sometimes seven days a week. I do get a lot of things done in that time, and I believe I'm very efficient and effective when it comes to work. I do sometimes find it hard to believe that there are people out there who do work 10 hours a day, sometimes even every day of the week. Because for me, if I'm doing four hours of intense coding, my brain is fried. I need a break and I can't do two of these blocks a day. I can do one block, take a break, and then do some other lighter work. So in the end, I come up with six or seven hours, but definitely not 10. But I, I don't feel like I need to either. I make great progress in the hours I have every day. So here's an exemplary breakdown of the daily goals. Four boxes for Spanish, which equals the two hours of Spanish I've set out to do every single day. I have three boxes for running, gym and stretch. This actually takes more than one and a half hours. The run alone is already more than an hour. So this would be more like four or five boxes. But I try to limit the boxes for some of the tasks that are not really work. And for Spanish, for example, I won't give myself six, seven or eight boxes just because I watch four hours of Spanish YouTube content. Then I have two boxes here for a call with developers for the guy GG. I have six boxes for training the Valorant bot backend, which is the first part of doing that whole thing. And then I have four boxes for the Langia rate limiting. So as you can see, I'm not working on all my projects all days. I have no work tomorrow on Bitcoiner.bio, for example. Sometimes days can be very topical. Two weeks ago, I only worked on a landing page for the guide inside for two days straight. And then the next day, almost only worked on a landing page for Bitcoiner Bio. I also tried to only write code for one of my projects per week. This week is coding for Lengia, marketing for Bitcoiner Bio, and all kinds of different things for the guide. That way I get to balance my mental load and get to do all kinds of different things every single week, which is what I love to do as a generalist. And that's basically it. It's fairly simple, it's flexible, and it works, at least for me, and that's the most important part. After each week, you go back to reevaluate your monthly goals, and at the end, if everything works well, you achieved your monthly goals and get to set the new monthly resolutions for the next month. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching.